Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the market site Times Square studio, we have Fausto Puglisi, President of Cyber Trading University. We're going to take a look at how to use NASDAQ Book Viewer to trade today's market. Fausto, it's great to see you as always, and it's nice to have a little bit of an extra tool on your side considering the volatility <laughs> that we've seen. And we know the back half of the year, we know we'll probably see some fireworks between the Fed and midterm elections and what's happening geopolitically. But with Book Viewer, you know, you have some straight up data right in front of you. Well, if that's the big key, uh, Jill, when it comes to trading. I mean, there's so much volatility that's been going on lately and people are thinking now, is this the bottom and so on? But you know what? With the book viewer, it kind of just kind of spells it out for you exactly where those orders are. It teaches everyone how to have a game plan. Most people always focus on the past where as a professional day trader, we just focus on the future and the book viewer is one of the greatest tools out there and doing so many of these events and I get some great examples and I look forward to showing you. We are going to take a look at because um, I, I think this is the most identifiable way to see where order flow is. Let's talk about Carvana. That has been, it's been a popular day trading name. Well, Carvana took a major hit. That stock was a $350 stock and came all the way down with all the, all the scrutiny and everything that went on down to $25. And the last couple of days has been on a really, really nice move. So what's nice about Book Viewer is that you can not only just use it, use it as a day trade, but you can also use it as a swing trade type of tool. You know, and it kind of gives you the game plan. But Carvana had a really nice move. Um, you could see here Carvana basically had a really nice trend on the intraday chart. And I posted a couple of arrows out there, and I could show you that Carvana obviously was up, you know, pretty big right here. You could see it's up, you know, what is that, about up, uh, almost like $1.60, up, up 30%. But the game plan that people have to understand is, where do I get out? Nobody just like, okay, it's all about taking profits. And you could see with the trend, most people think like, oh, the stock will continue to go higher. But when you look at the book viewer and you look at the right hand side, you know, there's not that many orders, Jill. People think that there's so many orders out there. There's really not 200, 300, 400. But what we look for is these things that are called iceberg orders, which we always talk about on your show. And you could see that there is a really big iceberg order right around that $27 price range. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 8,700 shares. But when you look at everybody else, one share, 300 shares. And then all of a sudden, when you look at it, it hits that resistance and the stock just totally backs off. And that's what the goal is. You could see it on the left-hand side. It's a big percentage gainer, but it's all about that where those orders, those high frequency trades, those dark pools, institutions, everything. Yep. Uh, and that's exactly where we see that 27. Let's talk about DraftKings, because when we mm -hmm. think about DraftKings, we think about betting, but you don't need to bet. I know that's really cheesy. <laughs> if you have BookViewer to help you identify where these orders live. Yeah, so DraftKings also had a really nice little run also. So DraftKings was trending up pretty nicely. Some people might call that might be a double top or, you know, and you could see that I had basically two charts there, a one day intraday chart and also a five day chart. And you could see that with the five day chart, it constantly had this problem of breaking this resistance level. And once again, everybody wants to know what is that resistance level? But when you look at the NASDAQ total view, it would make perfect sense. There is literally a 59,000 share seller. Once again, 300 shares, 500 shares, there are orders all over the place. But when you look at that, you could see there's a major resistance. And if you were not prepared, Jill, at that resistance, boom, the stock took a big hit. And then all of a sudden, that profit becomes, becomes a loss. And our last one, ADN, is the next ticker that we're taking a look at. Yeah, ADN was also a very nice stock. Um, this is a great intraday stock. This stock literally ran from about like a $2 to about, uh, about almost $4 a share, which is a pretty substantial <laughs> winner for, for an intraday stock. Now, the thing is that you have to understand about this stock is that it came crashing down at $4 a share. And when you look at Book Viewer, on the right-hand side, you'll see that there were big orders out there. You had a 12,000 share seller, a 31,000 share seller. You're not seeing any buyers on the bid. So the whole idea with the Book Viewer, if you use it towards not only your day trading, but your swing trading, and if you're looking to have that game plan where to get out, the Book Viewer will tell you with those orders and where they are. And to wrap up here, how do you pick what stocks you want to look at? Is, are those larger indicators you know, where there's either volume or significant percentage moves? How do you pick what you want to see in Book Viewer? Well, that's a great question. And on the first slide, I showed you basically that, uh, we as traders, we want to trade stocks that have volatility. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we want to see stocks that are in the big percentage gainers and losers. And the whole idea is you want to see if the stock has good spreads, uh, good volatility and so on. So, and what happens, it will trickle, it will trickle into, you know, a couple of days, you know, if the stock has some good momentum, like the reason why I brought Carvana, for example. And believe me, there's so many of them, even Amazon, all of them. But 
the thing is, you look at the big percentage gainers and losers, that's what we look as traders because there are over 25,000 stocks that trade. Right, you can't right. trade them all, but you want things to have good volatility, and that's why you find stocks like this that have those big moves, and it's all just on those little on those tickers. All right, Fausto, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.